I'm so glad you have joined us today here at Redemption Church, Casa Grande. My name is Allie. Thank you for stopping by today. I want to share a couple of things with you just before we get right into the service today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Never miss a video again. Every week, thousands of people tune in from all over the world to watch our service. We would love for you to follow us on social media as well. Please share our content. You never know who might see a video or a post and choose to follow Jesus for the first time. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. on campus or online. For more information, you can go to www.redemptioncg.org. If you would like to give financially to help us reach more people for Jesus, you can give on our church app or online at www.redemptioncg.org slash give. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go right into the service. Grab your Bible and your journal and lean into what Jesus has for you today. Well, good morning and praise God. How is everybody doing? Everybody doing well this morning? Well, good. Glad you're joining us this morning. You see nothing. Let's get ready to give this morning, can we? Father, we're getting ready to give our tithes and our offerings, and we say thank you. You've given us a job. You've given us an income. You've given us an ability, uh, God, to earn. And so we give back our our first portion to you and say thank you. It's yours. This first piece is yours. And God, we're glad to give it to you this morning. And so we give with the whole heart, we give with a cheerful heart, and we say take it, bless it, further it so that more people might come to know Jesus in a real and significant and eternal way in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. Bless you this morning as you give. If you have your Bible with you this morning, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6. Verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Father, as we're turning into our Bibles this morning, I pray, God, that you would give us ears to hear what you're saying, God, in a heart that's soft to receive what you're saying, God, and give us eyes to see what you're doing in us, God, and in me today. In Jesus' name we pray, and somebody said, Amen. Are you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14? Your Bible says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness. I'm going to talk for just a little bit this morning about that there's really two yokes in Scripture that he talks about and how important it is to be yoked yoked properly. And, and if this isn't just a sense of marriage. This is, this is not a marriage class, but, but it's, it's really to show how how two people or two things could come together and really do some significant, powerful things for the Lord if we'll allow Him to. But you can also refer this to as marriage as well, um, but just in our daily lives. So, so Jesus, through the writer Paul, is writing and saying, listen, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? So so put up my, my, my picture of the two ox there. So so there's there's a a historical representation of what a yoke would be. So it's this it's this big wooden beam that is that is that is fashioned to put on on these big beasts and a ring around its neck to to uh, being able to pull. And so an unequally yoked team has one stronger ox and one weaker wa- or ox and a taller one and a shorter one. And the weaker or the shorter ox would walk more slowly than the taller one, of course. The stronger one causing the load. So if you're unequally yoked, so give me the other one. (laughs) 
you could imagine, you could imagine that the donkey is probably not pulling the same amount of weight as the camel. And this is what this is the picture that Jesus is writing to us through the words of the Apostle Paul. And he's saying, don't be unequally yoked. Because one is going to be taller, one's going to be stronger, and it's going to cause... Now, if they, if they keep pulling this man in this plow, they're going to start going in circles. Because one is naturally stronger than the other one, and they were never meant to be unequally yoked that way. The same is when you're in the world and in relationships. You've got to be careful who you're yoked up with because there'll be one stronger and one weaker, and the stronger one will pull you. You see, when, when ox are unequally yoked, they cannot perform the task that's set before them. And in fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10, the law forbade a mixture of animals, such as an ox or a donkey, because there would be an unequal pull that would cause suffering to the weaker animal. I find it interesting that these yokes go back to the go back to the other one that that these yokes had to be custom fit to each animal as 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 one yoke builder wrote he said uh, yokes for oxen are like shoes for children one size does not fit all the young team may need as many as 5 or 6 yokes before it reaches full maturity a well-fitted yoke will allow an ox team to pull its full potential. A poor-fitted yoke will cause discomfort and can injure the oxen and will not allow the team to pull to its full potential. So listen to me, young people. You better be careful who you're getting close to and who you're yoking with. But you need to know that Jesus was the master carpenter, you see. And He knows how to fit you properly for the road, for the pull ahead, for the load ahead that you have to pull. He knows just how to fashion your yoke. But we also don't have to worry because these yokes, you see, are not singular. They're plural. They have two rings for two shoulders. One for you and one for Him. But you've got to be careful who you yoke yourself up with. Do you believe the same? Do you pray the same? Do they want to go in the same direction as you? If you're not careful, they'll lead you into a direction that is not healthy and not spiritual for you. And some will say, no, pastor, I'm strong. I'm stronger than that. Oh, are you? Oh, they've been in the world much longer than you've been in Jesus. And they've had practice, they've had good practice at being a sinner. <laughs> they've had good practice at being carnal. They've had good practice at being, and by the way, they have the dark, they have, they have, they have the, the, the angel of darkness on their side that don't you think has an assignment on your life and is trying to pull you so that you will not be able to fulfill your potential, but you'll be just going in circles. <laughs> Wouldn't the devil just love to make you go? Come here, son. So we have a yoke today. We have a yoke. I have another one, but it's too heavy. <laughs> and so this is what they would do. They would, they would take an older wiser, better looking. <laughs> ox. And they would take a younger. Not as good smelling. Younger ox and they would put. Now see, 
this has been fashioned. This has been fashioned for us. So that it wouldn't cause discomfort, but that we would, as I would, as the older, wiser ox. That's key. Could tell the younger, untrained, where to go. Are you? Good. Where do you want to go? Which way? I won't go this way. I won't go this way. So guess what? I get my way. Hold on, Edwards. I want to go this way. See how I, how easily... I'm training my son. Son, if you take another step. You'll hurt yourself. I'm going to back us up. And we're going to go back here to safety. Where we need to go. You see, I need to be hooked up with some people in my life who will take me places. I need, I, I, I need to be around an older, wiser ox who, by the way, that's not even hardly touching his shoulders. I got, I got, I got all the weight on my shoulder. He's untrained. He, he doesn't know better yet. And so, why would I put two untrained, unlearned, unskilled ox together? Because if I put, if I put, if I put Jordan up here, they're going to get in trouble. That's why he's still on the camera. <laughs> They'd be running all over this sanctuary. But the older, wiser father says, no, let's just go slow and steady, son. Let's, let me teach you a few things because there's going, to be, there's going to be some pitfalls, potentially. But you see, I've been there before. I have seen some things. I've experienced some things. And son, I don't want you to do the things maybe that I have done or that I have seen other people do. And so I'm going to train you, but you're going to have to learn because you're unskilled and you're still, you're still full of vim and vinegar and all kinds of things. And I'm going to have to train some things out of you so that you can become the man of God that you've been destined to be. But if I allow him to be hooked up with just anybody... You see, I could have called any of you up here to be yoked with him, but it's not your job. Yeah. Thank you, son. You want to just set it there? So, so look at this. Matthew. Thank you, boy. So, so before I get to Matthew... Let me just let me just sink this in real quick that we have to we have to make sure that we're going in the same direction that when we're that when we're finding when we are finding a mate we need to make sure that we're going in the same direction when we're with our friends and we're with our family we need to make sure that we're going in the same direction because because this could be this could be light and could be constructive or it could be very heavy and destructive because you have because you remember it's fashioned for you so that it wouldn't cut you so that it wouldn't hurt you so that it molds to your shape because it was never meant we look at yokes as a burden but they're not because they were fashioned for you and you're not meant to carry all of the load all by yourself that's why it's a team of oxen this is not singular it was never meant to be singular. It was always meant to be plural. 
more than one. For those of you that went to Vista Grande. So watch, so watch. Matthew chapter 11. Oh, watch this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. <sighs> Jesus is speaking. And he begins to give this little dissertation, and, and you never really understand what it means until you under, what it means until you understand the yoke. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, "Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul." Verse 30, that always perplexed me. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Remember when I was standing there, as the older, wiser one, and I had most of the burden on my shoulder, and he had much less of a burden on his shoulder? It's the same way with our Lord. If you'll, if you'll get yoked up and if, you'll get, and if you'll tie yourself, so to speak, spiritually to the Lord, He'll carry the weight. And your yoke and your burden will be much lighter because He's carrying much more of the weight than you. You see, Jesus is referring to this heavy wooden harness that fits over the shoulders of two oxen. And it's used to attach them neck to neck to hitch them up to a plow that they are to pull across the field to prepare it for planting a crop. But first, the ox needs to be broken in. To train a young ox, wise farmers are careful not to pair it with another young ox or an ox that's been poorly trained. Young oxen might be strong and energetic, but they don't know how to wear the yoke and they don't know how to pull the plow. They jerk and they strain and they try to get out of the yoke. <laughs> like this. Look, look at this. Look at the one laying down. All mad. That's being pretty unequally yoked, isn't it? <laughs> they jerk and they strain and they try to get out of the yoke. They charge forward to rush to the end of the job. Can we just finish, Dad? When are we, when are we going to be there? chafing their necks and choking themselves, or they try to wander off to graze in a field in a meadow. But if you take a young ox and pair it with a mixture ox or an older ox who's been well trained, then it learns. The lead ox shows the younger how to wear the yoke loosely and lightly. Because the power of them two together, it pulls the brunt of the weight of the plow and it leads the younger one to pull the plow steady, step by step, straight ahead, without getting bruised and without getting worn out. Jesus is the mature ox that we need in our lives. So listen, this is the power of the yoke. Typically a young untrained ox is yoked with an older trained ox, right? The younger learns from the older. If a trained ox can pull 5,000 pounds, and an untrained ox can pull 2,000 pounds, did you know that together they can pull 10,000 pounds? much more than the sum of the two. Over time, the untrained ox becomes trained, and the two become, and they, they two become one, and they walk in step with each other, and then together they can pull 15,000 pounds. Because they have learned now to walk step in step, and they can get, they can get much more accomplished by, by, by pulling equally together, and then there's not one that's overburdened, and there's not one that's not pulling their share. But they're, they're able to pull together, and they might pull, they might pull you know, 10,000 pounds you know, s struggling together, 
But, but as they learn how to get step in step, you see, with our Savior, we can learn how to get step in step with our Savior. And we can, and we can pull straight ahead with our Savior. And we can accomplish a whole lot more with our Savior. But it's what are we yoked up with? Are we yoked up with our Savior? Are we yoked up with, our, with the world? Are we yoked up with our flesh? Are we yoked up with some people that don't believe like we believe and think like we think and pray like we pray and do like we do? Because there's going to be a struggle and it's going to wear you out. And some of us, I would dare say this morning, are worn out because you've been yoked incorrectly. Trying to fight and trying to do it on your own and trying to, trying to do it your way. When eventually <laughs> the trained ox... The, now, some, now some people are untrainable. Some people just seems like they're just going to fight everything. I know I need to go to I know I need to go to church, but I don't, I don't want to. I want to do my own thing. I I know I know I need to read my Bible, but I don't want to. I want to watch TV instead. I, I want to. I don't want to pay my tithes. I want to do it my way. I, besides, if I save and I just and I and I just manage my money my way, then I'll be fine. And I really don't need God to help me with my. I I can just do it my way. Well, well, I don't need nobody telling me how to run my marriage and how to how to take care of my kids and how to. I'll just do it all my way. I don't I don't need. And you're wondering why you're worn out, chafed, bruised, cut, injured, and you're and you're unsatisfied and you're unfulfilled in your life because you've been struggling for so stinking long. And there's a wiser, older ox that is standing next to you, and his name is Jesus, and saying, If you'll just let me, son, and if you'll just stop pulling, girl, and if you'll just stop straining, and you'll allow me to train you. You see, Proverbs says to train up a child in the way he should grow, and when he grows old, he'll not depart from it. Come on, we're going to go this way. But Dad, I want to go, son, that way is dangerous. We went to go play in the snow yesterday. And, and, and the boys, you know, 13 and 15, they get all excited, and, and, and so they jumped in the back of the truck, they got their sleds real quick, and they just go zipping up the side of the hill. The older, wiser one stayed in the truck with the heater on. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, older, the older, wiser one, Greta, got out of the truck. Greta got out of the truck, and she's looking at the mountain, and she's looking at where they're going, and she's like... And they're gone. They, they're out of there. So she walks around the other side of the truck and she walks down the little road a little ways and she hops up on this little hill and she's looking around like this. And she comes back to the truck and she, she yells, Boys! You went the wrong way. If you're going to go to the big hill, you need to come around this way. It's much easier if you'll go this way. And they yell back, Ha! Ah, we're fine. They get on their sled it was it was an untraveled path it was a, it was there was no path they were just going to try to blaze their own trail well if you know anything about playing in the snow it's easier to go down somebody else's path that's beaten down put a big old boy on it a couple of times and get that worn down a little ways and 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 so they so they so they listened to the older wiser Woman, I'm not going to call her an ox. And she goes around and she charted a better path. And then once, once they listened to her and they went around, they had so much more fun because they went around the different paths. You see, young people, we're not trying to hurt you by telling you no we're doing it for your benefit because we've touched the stove and the stove hurts. We've gotten speeding tickets and they're expensive. We, we've, we've come, you see, we see older and wiser ox 
There was a period of time that they were the younger, untrained, unskilled ox. And they had to learn from somebody to do the right thing. And some of us don't have those kinds of people in our life who will lead us and try to help us do the right thing. But if we'll listen to our pastors and our teachers and, and, and our scripture, then, then He'll lead us and he'll, and he'll direct us. And His yoke is easy and His burden is light. And so when we look at it, we say, well, how come it feels so heavy then? Because, honey, you're wearing it wrong. How come this Christianity is hard? Then you're not doing something right. Because you have to remember, <laughs> this was fashioned for you so that it shouldn't hurt. Remember, Jesus is the master carpenter. It was fashioned so that it wouldn't hurt you. And if it's hurting you, it's not the carpenter's fault that fits you. Pastor, I wish my marriage could be better. Stop pulling on each other. Oh, the symbol of the marriage. One is stronger than the other. The man of the house is stronger than the woman of the house. I was so upset to hear that our nation's government has decided to pass legislation that Transgender boys can now play sports with girls and compete with girls. They're a, they're a man in a girl's basketball uniform or track uniform, but they still have the makeup as a man. There are things uniquely... Listen to me. Don't get mad at me. It's the truth. There are things uniquely that God created the man to do, to carry, that He did not create the woman to do. Vice versa, there are things that the woman was created to do that the man cannot do and there is no substitute for. That's why there needs to be one man and one woman going and being yoked together and learning from each other. And one, in many cases, is stronger than the other. And so they'll, when they yoke up together, it won't be burdensome for either one of them. They won't get hurt. They won't get injured. They won't get bruised. They won't get chafed because there is one. Okay, Greta can't pull as much as I can physically. And so I carry, a, I carry part of the load that she was never meant to carry. Men, if you're making your wife carry the load that she was never meant to carry, shame on you. <laughs> there was a funny, funny movie when I was a little kid, but really it's, I guess it's sad now when you think of it, Mr. Mom. Remember that? Really a tragedy because there are some things, Michael, that you can do with your children that Dee was never created for. There's, there, there's something different about a father who can speak into their child. There's something different about their mother. And they need both of that coming together in a heterosexual way. Because I am teaching my boy. Listen, I say this a lot. But it's true. I'm teaching my boys how to treat their wife based on how I treat my wife. And my wife is learning, is my wife is teaching my boys how they should be treated by a woman based on how she treats me. Now some of us can say, oh, praise God. And some of us might go, oh, God. Because our children are watching us. 
And they're watching every move we make. They're watching every yoked up situation that is, un, that is, that is unequal, that is unbalanced in our lives. That we're going, why am, I, why am I tired? Why is this not, why is this, it's supposed to be easy. And it's supposed to be light. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be life giving. It's supposed to help me reach my potential. It's supposed to help me to reach my full capacity. But, but, but there's a strain and there's a struggle. and there's a, Then there's something I'm not doing right. God, help me. Refashion me. Refashion me so that I can so that I can lead how I should lead and how I can pull the part that I need to pull. Help me to pull what I need to pull. See, this yoke imagines two things. It's a working tool for greater productivity in farming. One stronger and one weaker. One less experienced, one more experienced. And then it also is a good picture of this. It's the submission to God's authority and way of life. Because there's one head, there's one head, but in the middle that's missing is a ring. And that's where, that's where it would be pulled onto the plow or to the cart. And, and if they're both not pulling, it's, it's I'm willing to submit to the weight of God's grace Because remember, it's fashioned just for me and it shouldn't hurt me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit to the grace of God and do it His way. It shouldn't take long for a mature ox to train an untrained younger ox. I would assume... A field, one field would probably be enough to... Because you're only going to pull so long and so hard against... Listen, I could... Listen, I could wear Jonathan's butt out. I outweigh him by 150 pounds. Listen, I could wear his butt out. And it's probably not going to take long of me pulling that against him that he's going to learn, I need to get in line and I need to start doing. Amen. Good question. How much more pulling and yanking and jerking and running ahead are you going to have to do before you learn? I guess I can't do it my way. I don't even want to do it my way. Because I've tried it my way, Javi, and it don't work. I get bruised and beat up and battered and torn up. I'd much rather, I'd much rather do it his way because his way is so much better than my way. And so, so it, 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 it shouldn't, even though I'm, but you know what, I'm stubborn though too. Are, are you stubborn today? I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn. And, and, and I want to do it my own way. But you know what? It hurts. It hurts to do it my way. And I fail when I do it my way. So why can't I do it His way? Because His way is so much better. So the yoke is a symbol of putting down your law, and putting down your work, and picking up the grace that's only found in God. When Jesus, the master craftsman, said, My yoke is easy, I bet memories flooded back into him of his time in the woodshop. Carving the curved opening of the yoke to fit around each animal's neck, sending it down carefully so that it rub, wouldn't rub any spot raw or hurt the animal. When he asks you to take his yoke upon you, he means the one that's custom made and custom fit just for you and just for him. It's designed to preserve you from unnecessary pain and let you reach your full potential. But yet we're still fighting against it. Just as yokes were made to join the pulling power of two animals, His yoke is meant to join your strength to His and let the two of you pull together. So see young people talking about relationships? Is this girl who I'm madly in love with, is she going to pull with me or is she going to pull against me?
vice versa. Are they, are they, pulling, are they pulling more for me or are they pulling against me? See, I, don't wanna, I, w- I won't link up with people who won't pull with me. I want people who are, who, are, who are rowing the same way in the boat. Because, you know, if you're, if you're rowing one way and I'm rowing the other, we're going to go in circles much like this. Remember how I told you in the beginning that if you're unequally yoked and there's a, a bigger, stronger one and a weaker one or a different even kind of animal, they'll, 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 they'll plow in circles. <laughs> same way in a boat, you're, you're going this way and, and somebody else is going this way, you're, you're going to have problems. <laughs> So are you working hard to do it all by yourself? You're not meant to. And then I love the last verse that he talks about the yoke in Scripture. It's Galatians chapter 5. Verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Here he's describing a different type of yoke. It's one, us being yoked together with Christ's freedom, and the other yoke being bondage. What he's talking about is the law there. The yoke of bondage in Scripture is the yoke of the law. Your works, your plan set by a rule, and you receive harsh judgment if you did not follow this after the law. But he's saying, listen, Christ has made us free. Don't go back again to a yoke that would cause bondage. I want you to be free, because remember, Jesus said it best, that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But if you go back to the law, in other words, you keep trying to do it by yourself, that's what, well, that's what the law is, the law is works, and it's dead. If you go back to the law and you keep trying to do it yourself, you'll be unequally yoked and you'll have pressure where you shouldn't have to have pressure. And can I tell you, life gives us enough pressure as it is without us causing harm ourselves to us. But I'm convinced much of the harm that we cause is self-harm. I want to go over there and graze. I got wondering. I... The grass is greener maybe on the other side, so I know we're supposed to be going this way, but hey. Hey. I couldn't imagine being hooked up with a great big huge mature ox. And you start looking the other way and you start wanting to slow down or speed up and how much that had to pinch and how much that had to hurt. The other word for a yoke is the restrainer. That we need to be we need to be restrained. And really this is a picture of the Holy Spirit, the restrainer who will restrain us if we'll allow Him to to go where we need to go and be yoked up with who we need to be yoked up with and and walk to our full potential and to do what God has asked us to do. But if we keep keep fighting it, then we're really fighting the Holy Spirit. We're really fighting the Word of God that has been planted over our lives and on our shoulders so that we can walk in truth and so that we can walk in His grace and so that we could we could pull all that we need to pull for the road ahead. But instead, we just keep fighting. And he says, no, listen, stand therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Don't go back to trying to do it yourself. That's Old Testament. They had to, they had to gain their forgiveness by their works and by their deeds. We gain it by just accepting the finished work of the cross and His name is Jesus. And so we don't have to worry about being yoked again with bondage because we have been set free by Christ. And if we'll allow Him to, He'll carry the weight for us and it will, be, and it will fit loose and it will be 
life-giving. Not a dredge. So could we just stop? Stop fighting. Stop fighting it. Why don't in 2021, why don't you, why don't you just give in to the things of God and say, you know what? I'm going to go all in in 2021. I'm, I'm going to stop because my shoulders are tired and my, my, man, I'm so tired of having all these nicks and scrapes and bruises and bumps. I'm tired of, I'm tired of, I'm tired of going in circles. I don't like going in circles. I like going in circles for a little bit on the teacups at Disneyland. Space Mountain. But I want to get off eventually or it'll make you sick. And some of you are about ready to get sick because you've been going. So, so I dare you. Why don't you just step into this year and just go, you know what, I'm going to do everything that God asked me to do. I'm going to give in. I'm going to stop fighting Him on stuff. I'm going to stop fighting. You know, see, you don't have a problem with people. You have a problem with God. It's people you take it out on. But your problem really is with God. Because if you love God like you say you do, then you'd love people. You don't have a people problem. You have a God problem. I don't know. My New Testament says that if you love God, if you say you love God and hate your brother, the truth is not in you and it makes you a liar. That's what the Bible says. You don't like it? Take it up with Him. Oh my God. So I'm gonna stop fight. I'm gonna stop fighting God. God, I'll do whatever you ask me to do this year. I'll, I'll surrender my way because my way isn't working. In your finances, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do it your way, God. In your marriage, I'm gonna do it your way, God. In your in your in your in your job, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it your way, God. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the kind of employee that, that you would want me to be in Jesus' name. I'm gonna be the type of church member that I would want to see if I was the pastor. Oh, where'd that come from? I'm gonna be the type of church. I'm gonna be the type of church member that I would want to have if I was the pastor. I'm going to listen, and if God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. And if God tells me to give up something, I'm going to give it up. And if God tells me to add something to my, then I'm going to add. Because I want to be yoked with Him. Because it's easy, and it's light. Every now and then, it gets heavy. And then I have to check myself. I don't have to check Him. I check myself and say, Lord, what is it going on in me that I need to change? Because this feels kind of heavy. It feels kind of burdensome. It doesn't feel like Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. Check me. Father, I love you today. I thank you for the two yokes of Scripture. Uh, I pray, God, that you'll help us in Jesus' name to unsaddle ourselves, to unyoke ourselves from the things that we have yoked ourselves to and to with that has not led us in a place spiritually healthy. I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name that we could take on the yoke of the rabbi today and we could yoke ourselves to you, Jesus. Say, Lord, help my burden to be easy. Help my burden to be light. And you'll be sure to carry most of the weight. Thank you that you carry the weight in this load. And I can have it to fit loose. And I can have it fit right. So God, whatever it is in our lives, whatever it is in my life, Lord, that needs to be shifted, that needs to be changed, that needs to quit, that needs to stop, that needs to cease, or what needs to begin and happen, Lord, let it be in Jesus' name. So that we could be equally yoked, so that we can be yoked to our Savior Jesus, so that we can be disciplined, so that we can be submissive to your ways and God to your will. God, I just love you. God, I bless you. and God, I thank you for what you're going to do 
as we just continue to carry your yoke because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. In Jesus' name I pray. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching today and you've said, Pastor, my burden has been heavy and I'm tired of trying to carry it and do it all by myself, but Today I realize that I need to hook up, I need to yoke up with Jesus. And I need to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I need to give Him control of this yoke. If that's you, would you just, right where you are, just pop up your hand right where you are, or if you're watching today, say, yeah, that's me. Yeah, who else? Yeah. This is what I want you to do, just... Repeat this prayer after me and we're going to yoke up with Jesus in this prayer. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of all of my sin and forgive me for doing it my own way. Help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You received that this morning. So, hey, I got you out early. It's 1121. Yeah. So, this is what I want you to do. Love on somebody, and then we'll see you back. Listen, I need you here Wednesday night. We're going through each book of the Bible. We're walking through each book of the Bible on Wednesday nights. We're having dinner together. No charge to you. It's 6.30. Well, unless you're cooking. (laughs) Um, 6.30 is dinner. 7 o'clock is the service. We go for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We'll have you out by 8, 8 8.15. And and listen, I can't teach teach that on Sunday morning like this, but but on Wednesday nights is is a time to go deeper. And I really, 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 really want you in this house on Wednesday nights, if you can do it at all, because, because it's just going to be good for you. Listen, I said this before, and, I, and I'm going to say it again. Give me a year and it will change your life. You give me a year of your life and it will change your life. You'll, you'll, see, you'll see God do some, some crazy things. And I've already taken the offering and I'm not going to take another one. But let me just tell you, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if you want God to do some miracles in your life, and in your finances, you need to learn how to tithe. Now, I've already taken the offering. I'm not taking another one. I only take one. I'll never take two. If you want to see God move in your life and like never before, and we're going to start having some testimonies of some people, what God has done in their lives. But, but if you'll give God what God asks for, oh, my God, he'll give you what you ask for. And, and I'm, just, I'm just saying that because I, as your pastor... You see, I didn't get an opportunity today to really teach you about the yoke of the rabbi. You see, there's the yoke, there's the unequal yoke, and there's the yoke of Jesus, but then there's also a yoke of the rabbi. The rabbi means teacher. And so what he's saying there in Scripture is that you need to yoke, and in tradition says, you need to yoke up with a pastor, with a teacher who can train you and teach you in the way that you should go. And so for a period of time, in fact, you could tell in the olden days who the rabbi was based on, based on the students because the students began to talk like the rabbi. Because the students did what the rabbi asked. And so, so, so you, you, can tell, you can tell my boys are mine based on their sarcasm. I mean, based on their... <laughs> based on their big feet. You can tell my boys are my boys if you hang around my boys. Right? You can tell my wife is my wife. I, I was listening, I was listening on Sunday how she was preaching, and I thought, oh my God, I can hear me in her. I can hear me in her. And 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 because she's been around me, because she's because we've been in this yoke together. And and so I'm not nothing special. But but if you'll yoke up with me and, and you'll let me train you and you'll let me teach you as a father, your life will change. And so I just dare you. I dare you. Get in. Get in and get close to me. How? Well, Pastor, what, what, when can I come in during the office? No, it's not that. 
Lean into the services. Take notes. Take listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm doing. Listen, listen to my listen to my messages. Listen, come on Wednesday nights and let me get close to you and let me teach you like a father. Because your Bible says that you have many, you have ten thousand instructors, but you have not many fathers. And so what you you don't need another instructor. You don't need another pastor. You don't need another teacher. What you need is a father to speak deeply into your life. And if you stay, if you only come around once a once in a while, then I can't give you everything I got. And so pull on me this year. Pull on me and 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 because there's a there's a there's a transference of anointing that takes place. Oh, I'm gonna have to teach that someday. There's a transference of anointing that takes place because what's on me will rub off on you. And I might not be the most successful, but oh my God, I can teach you some things about kids. I can teach you some things about marriage. I can teach you some things about finance. You rub up on me. I get a kick out of I get a kick out of Pam. I was teasing Pam last week. I said I I I, I said something. I said I said I, I smell like Pam because Pam puts on perfume and she's had the same perfume as long as I've known her probably. What do you wear? What is it? Woman? Oh, it's not woman. It's called woman, huh? It's woman. Well, she wears woman, okay? The woman wears woman. And if you hug her, you will walk away and you'll smell like woman. She hugged me this morning. The first person that hugged me this morning when I walked in was Pam. I smell like Pam now. And I love it. I love her hugs. But you know what? But but if you see, because if you if you stay in the kitchen long enough, you'll smell like what's being cooking. And if you get around me long enough, I'll teach you some things. But you got to stay around to learn. So can we do that? Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go somewhere for lunch, would you? And tip them good. Yeah, go home and tip your wife. Love you. We'll see you Wednesday night, six thirty. God bless.